Hey everyone, Argle Fump here playing the Hardy Boys, The Hidden Theft. We are solving this puzzle for Val. We don't know what way to turn the gondolas. Here, now please leave me be. I find the inability of others to complete simple tasks frustrating. This guy's a jerk. Okay, so the puzzle is eyes on the witch, a nose for the werewolf, ear for the vampire, and you can see the pictures of these things. A skeleton's got that. Fairy has hearts. Devil has burning things. Ugh. And pirate apparently has potions. So let's get some of this stuff here. So the pirate has potions. Are these potions? No, those aren't potions. These are potions. Great. Uh, Dracula has ears. So let's get some ears on Dracula. And the fairy has hearts. So let's see if we can get some hearts. So the controls for this puzzle are that you, you click on one of the costumes in order to zoom in on the costume. The knight has has that stuff. Okay, those hands we just saw. Knight has hands. And if you ever want to back away uh, from the costume, you just right click. That's how the controls work for this puzzle. The witch has eyes. Yes, the eyes have it. And devil has the, the weird medical charts. I don't know what you call those things. Skeleton. Skeleton has teeth. And the werewolf. Our buddy the werewolf has the noses. Bingo! We did it! Hooray! Now we can finally, finally leave this area. Okay. The gondolas are in position. Great! Your timing is excellent. I'm almost done here myself. Uh, please go into the back room while I set the alarm. Try not to move too much once you're back there. Motion sensors, you know. I'll join you in a moment and bring you to Mr. Seep. Will do. Thanks, Val. <laughs> Don't mention it. So, um, he says he's going to bring us to Mr. Seep, but he's lying. This, this guy's actually a lying jerk. As soon as we uh, get out of his sight, he disappears. Alright, into the back room. And he instantly leaves without doing anything. Yeah, I don't like this guy. I don't like him at all. So here in the back room, we've got a couple of things. Uh, we've got this on the ground. I'll just take this. Could come in handy. We have locked stairs. It's locked. Strange, strange. It's got a, a chess piece. And over here, we have a bishop's miter. It's a chess piece. Okay, and it's got a white piece. Wait, hold on a second. Ebony? That that's white colored. That that's ivory, not ebony. Ebony and ivory work in perfect harmony. So what what we have to do is go back to the knight here. The knight who. Uh, is a chess player, I suppose. It's a chess piece. Yeah, hmm. Strange how, strange how they mixed up the colors on the chess pieces. Anyway, it doesn't matter if you go through the door on the left or the door on the right while going to the back. Both doors end up in the same area. This area. Let's, let's zoom in here. And now we can go upstairs for another puzzle! <laughs> so, uh, this puzzle we need to get these four constellations! Hooray! Those four constellations. So they go, they will be lit up here in the observatory. I'll just take this. Could come in handy. Someone here takes astrology too seriously. So you can kind of read a little bit about the constellations there in the bottom right-hand corner of the book. You can also read about them here in your journal. Your journal, the uh, four books, Tet Tetrabiblos. 
That's what Tetra Biblos means, I think. So this is a long 15-page thing about the various uh, constellations, and so that helps you know which constellation is which. I should also point out this is the exit door, that is the door we're trying to open, and this is the area where we, we will be finding constellations. So before we do that, before we do that, we need to actually mark down these constellations, and uh, the first four constellations are the ones we need to mark. Convenient! So, Scorpius, then Cassiopeia, the Queen of Egypt, Cancer, and then Andromeda, the daughter of the, the Queen of Egypt. She was Cassiopeia's daughter, and Cassiopeia tried to feed her to a kraken. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't a very good relationship. I No, it, it, it was not. It was not a good relationship. Cool. So, now we have the puzzle. What you have to do is make the constellation on this thing. Just go from dot to dot. We're playing Connect the Dots. It's beautiful. What you have to do is click on a particular circle in order to draw a line from it. Next we're going to draw this one. This is the Queen of Egypt. It looks kind of like a W and not like a queen, but okay. Sure. If you say it's a queen, then it's a queen. for cancer. It is possible to solve this puzzle without using the tracing paper, but obviously it's a lot easier if you have tracing paper to follow. And finally, Andromeda. So this would be the queen's daughter, and that doesn't look like the queen's daughter, that just looks like three lines. How do constellations work? Hmm. Anyway, we solved the puzzle, we opened the door, now we can finally meet Dougal Seep. We think he's the culprit, there was a lot of evidence at the crime scene indicating he's the culprit, but when we talk to him, he's going to give us a different interpretation of the evidence. Also, he must have been following us the entire time because he knows exactly who we are. Hi, we're from the New York Review. Are you Dougal Seep? You two are nothing if not persistent. New York Review my eye. Huh? I know why you're here, although apparently you do not. What are you talking about? Frank and Joe Hardy. You both attend Bayport High School. You both take after your rather gifted father when it comes to finding yourselves in and getting yourselves out of trouble. You have been led here by the well-intentioned but mistaken grace of the Bayport Police Department, have you not? Well, we'd like to think we led ourselves here. Of course, I'm not trying to take anything away from your detecting prowess. In fact, I should have said you've been misled here by the Bayport PD. If left to your own devices, you would likely have stayed on the correct trail. I assume you have some questions to ask. If you have answers. I have answers although they aren't likely to be ones you expect. Yeah, so this guy... I don't know about this guy. Anyway, we've got evidence proving you're the culprit, buddy. We have quite a bit of evidence linking you to the crime scene. Oh, really? Like what? Well, blood type, hair sample... You and the criminal share an extremely rare blood type. Ah, yes. AB negative. One would have to be a little less than astute if they knowing they had a rare blood type, committed a crime where they might leave that evidence behind. On the other hand, they might be so strongly motivated by hatred or need that they ignore the risk. In either case, you're dealing with someone more dangerous than the casual thief. I might advise you to be careful in your investigations. Is that a threat? I've been told that I have a threatening demeanor, and I suppose I've used it to my advantage in the past, but let me assure you that I am in all actuality concerned for your well-being. We have a hair sample from the scene. It matches yours. I very much doubt that. 
A sample of hair from the actual scene of the crime? Well, from a room where the thief was hiding. Well, that's different, isn't it? After all, you haven't yet asked me if I visited the beautiful and historic Spencer Mansion recently, have you? Oh, uh, well, have you? Visited Spencer Mansion recently, that is? Yes. Aha! Quite. I was there just two days ago. You got your hair cut? Yes, although I don't see what that has to do with anything. Yeah, now that he mentions it, that sounds like kind of stupid evidence. Oops.